We cover nuclear medicine, diagnostic radiology, IVR, and radiation oncology in our department. Uh, we are intensively investigating cardiac imaging using nuclear, CT, and MR. We started ECG gated SPECT using Thallium 201 and single head rotating gamma camera from 1983 uh, before the era of technician perfusion agent near the mouth headed uh, gamma camera. Then our idea was transferred to cardiac CT using single uh, helical CT. Now, a 4D cardiac CT is uh, so beautiful, uh, we can depict ischemia uh, with stress dynamic perfusion CT like nuclear medicine. We also propose image fusion of the physiological information to coronary CT angiography. Sarcoidosis is a systemic granulomatous disease of unknown etiology, whether in homogeneous distribution of inflammatory lesions, whether the cases necrosis and the fibrosis. Multiple organs are involved. The diagnosis of cardiac sarcoidosis is, is challenging because histological detection rate by endomyocardial biopsy is only less than 20%. In addition, there has been no appropriate biomarker for detecting active cardiac sarcoidosis. FDG PET identifies active regions where inflammatory cells utilize glucose with higher sensitivity than gallium scintigraphy. The suppression of physiological FDG uptake is essential for the assess assessment of active cardiac sarcoidosis. FDG PET is useful for assessing the, the effects of immunosuppressive therapies. Larger multicenter imaging studies in cardiac sarcoidosis are needed uh, to see if quantitative changes in FDG uptake are associated with its long-term prognosis. A myocardial perfusion PET, so ammonia PET is the best diagnostic tool for ischemic heart disease. The PET technique confers advantages of aspect related to improved image resolution. In addition, ammonia PET offers quantitative assessment of myocardial blood flow and coronary flow reserve by calculating at rest and stress MBF. We previously reported the clinical usefulness of CFR ratio, which was a value of relative analysis like relative flow reserve using quantitative myocardial PET measurements. So CFR ratio on ammonia PET had higher diagnostic performance in the detection of significant coronary artery disease than conventional CFR and MBF. This simple quantitative analysis would be useful in clinical decision making for revascularization. The best advantage is I think that every cardiologist can easily evaluate where they should treat visually. Coronary CT angiography has been widely used in clinical practice for patients with coronary artery disease. When the patient is diagnosed with any stenosis by CT angiography, functional assessment of myocardial ischemia is required. We have been focusing on stress CT perfusion since 2004. Cardiac CT could visualize myocardial ischemia using static image at that time. In addition, cardiac CT recently arose for quantification of the stenosis-related myocardial territory based on coronary CT angiography using a mathematical method. In clinical practice, we use three basic CT protocols and one research protocol. First, routine cardiac CT is mainly for adult coronary arteries. Second, post-operative evaluation for coronary artery bypass grafting and starts congenital heart disease. A human university also uses CT to evaluate myocardial blood flow. CT has high spatial and temporal resolution, and by using a wide vector CT, non-embedded quantitative blood flow evaluation is possible. We have been working on quantification of myocardial blood flow for 10 years. We believe that this technology will be used in more clinical situations in the future. Compress sensing is a technique which enables reconstruction of images from significantly fewer lines of data by relying on the concept that the information content of CMR images is compressible. 
Compress sensing has been used for several cardiac MRI applications, including real-time cine imaging, MR angiography, and perfusion imaging. This approach particularly contributes to shortening imaging time for cardiac MRI, and in terms of perfusion imaging, it may improve temporal or spatial resolution. Compress sensing can significantly reduce the burden on patients by shortening examination time. We believe that this approach will become a good adaptation of patients who cannot hold their breath or who have arrhythmias. I hope our clinical research would help developing diagnosis and patient care.